In this video, I'll be creating a quick quality of life context tool, similar to the one on duplicating a component from one of my last videos. This time, however, I will be extracting a component and I'm gonna be doing it in a different way than last time with some little unknown Unity functionality. So keep an eye out for that one. You can even use this functionality to update the previous code from the previous video. So let's get right into it. So I've given myself a head start and I've created a menu already. This is the menu item attribute and as you can see I've got the path here and obviously it starts with context because I want it to be assigned as a right click option when I press on a component in the inspector. I'm passing in the parameter of the command and all this does is this enables me to get the component that I've actually right clicked on to in order to do this particular functionality. Now we're going to create a new object which will be parented to the original source component that we're right clicking on. So we'll create a new game object and we're going to use the source component type as the name of this new game object because we want to give it some context. Now the next thing to do is basically to make sure that it's parented correctly. And what we'll do is we'll parent it to the source component transform. Now Unity does this annoying thing sometimes where when you create a brand new game object and it's gone to the root and then you do the parenting, etc., it can mess up the position, the rotation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste into here to say, you know, set the local scale, the local position, local rotation, just to what they should be, the default. Now, the next thing to do is where the secret source comes in. What we're going to do is we're going to use a little unknown library from Unity called the Unity Editor Internal Library. And this gives us access to a really handy, well, in this case, handy piece of functionality and class called component utility. And this gives us things like copy component. Now, here's the thing. The previous video I did on duplicating components, I basically serialized some objects and then from the source component and serialized the new component that I was actually looking at that I created. And then I used an iterator to go through those particular serialized values and set them over. It basically did a copy. Here, I'm using Unity's internal library to do that for me. And it's good to know both ways because sometimes you'll still want to use the iterator, say you're trying to find a particular field. So you can go back to your duplicate context that you used from the last video and use this here if you want to change it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy our source component. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to use the component utility again to paste our component as new. And we're going to paste that into the new game object we had. And that basically does a lot of the functionality for us. It's copying the source component and it's pasting it into a brand new game object we've made. But of course, we want to delete that original source component. Now, in the previous video of duplicating, I showed you how to use the undo queue. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do undo and I'm going to do destroy object immediate. And I'm going to do that on my source component. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying undo register the fact that I am destroying this source component. But as the eagle eyed viewers out there will know, I've actually just created a brand new game object and this undo won't undo that. So we're going to take a step up here and we're going to go undo dot register. And here, what we're going to do is the created object undo. And I'm just going to pass it the new object that I've done. And I'm just going to call this created child object just for the undo queue. So now with the undo, we're undoing the destroy and we're undoing the register of the newly created object. But here again, what's going to happen when we run this and we decide to undo it. Well, the first undo is going to undo the deletion of the source component, but you'd have to press it again to undo the creation of this new child object. And that just won't do. We want to wrap this up into a nice little package and only have to do it once. And how do we do that? Well, Unity gives us in our undo class, the ability to get the current group of the undo, so the index of the current undo set that we're actually doing. And what we can then do is we can increment the next group. And at the end, 
we can collapse all of our undo operations to the undo group index. And all this is doing is basically saying, let's look at the undo, let's, let's build a group of undos, let's add undos to them, and then let's collapse them all into a single undo. So this enables us to just do one undo and remove both of these undo operations in one go. Now that's all well and good, but these particular functions can fail. They have a bool return to say whether yes, they completed or no, they didn't. And therefore we want to know that because we don't want to have it fail and then run these because our undos just won't work properly and everything will just look really messy. So what we'll do is we'll capture in an if statement whether these two actually worked. So all we're doing here is we're saying, right, okay, do the copy component. And if that fails, go into this. And if this fails, go into this. So do the copy component. If that was good, then do the paste component as new. If that was bad, then you can come into here. Now, what are we gonna do in here? Well, we're gonna tell the user that the actual operation failed. And we'll put something like cannot extract component. Then we'll want to, because we're good tools programmers, actually pass in here the game object we're in question. So this means that when somebody presses on this log, the game object will be selected that the source component was from. And then we can return here. But here's the thing. If we return right here, then all we've done is incremented this current group, registered this undo, but not any of this. And what will happen is you'll have a brand new child object there and maybe the copy component worked, but it didn't paste. And it just doesn't make sense because then somebody will press undo and everything will start going wrong. So what can we do here? Well, what we can do is we can say, okay, I realized this went badly and it broke. So now I want to wrap everything up and perform the undo. So I'm forcing here when this fails to create that group and then perform that undo. So to repair what we've actually already done. And that's it. That's our code on how to perform extract using these little known methods from the editor internal library. So with our collider selected, we can choose the extract option and a child is born with the collider for its birthday. And because our undo grouping, we can do a single click and the child is rescinded back up into the parent and the birthday present is heading back to the store. And that's it. I wanted to note that you can pick up the assets shown in this video using the links in the description. And don't forget to do the like and subscribe thing. And special thanks to a couple of eagle-eyed viewers that spotted a mistake from a previous video that got pulled and was replaced with this one. Hopefully there aren't any mistakes in this video or the one you see on screen now.